We were just asked if we were ready. Are we ready? <laughs> Always. Hey, this is your Raiders show on our TV, and I tell you what, we are definitely ready to win the Western Conference, Western Division. It's all up for the taking. Hey, it's a four-game in the uh, series now. That's right. I, you know, it, it's it's fun because we could have so many roller coaster ups and downs throughout the season, but as you've always said, the master of, of, of knowledge for the for the for the Raiders forever is that it comes down to how you play in December when there it's you cold go. outside. There you got to go. be able to run the football. September and October, the Raiders were going through a four-game skid. Now that four-game skid has become infectious throughout the entire AFC West. Denver hasn't won in, what, seven games? Yep. Kansas City is uh, on their four-game skid, and San Diego started off 0-4. Yep. So now is the time when you have to play some football. Unfortunately for the Oakland Raiders, they still have left the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Diego uh, excuse me, Los Angeles. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> hey, Los Angeles. You're going to continue to do it. It's hard. After all it these is, years, man. it is. The 60s, so the best right? thing to do is just say Chargers. Just the Chargers. <laughs> the Chargers on their slate. So the Raiders can actually win out or actually beat Kansas City and San Diego and have San Diego in division wins and Kansas City in head to head. They can afford to lose to Dallas or, or, or to Philadelphia. Well, you know, it's funny because. I'm watching the Philadelphia game in Seattle, right? And because Philadelphia was top dog at the time, one loss, everybody's pulling for Seattle. I'm like, come on, Philly, come on, Philly. Because as soon as they, they, they clinch. clinch, it lets down a little bit. Right. I mean, it just is what it is. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to take every advantage there is, <laughs> every one. So if, if they clinched and they're not playing, good. I mean, not not giving, you know, not playing the starters and all. Hey, we'll take any win we can get right now. Because right. if we get in a dance, that's all you need. That's is all to be we need. We just got to the get there. Right. In that first game, if we win the division, we'll be at home. So the thing I was looking at when I was looking at Seattle and Philly, I was looking at, you know what? They don't look so damn invincible to me. No. You know, I feel like that they could be beat on any given Sunday like anybody, whether that's they're right. resting players or not. If we get hot right now, and that's what we're trying to do. We just strung two wins together. We need to get hot. And we get hot in December, that's a good thing. Yeah, because it's cold. It's cold outside. <laughs> we got to get hot in December, right? And but, with this guy running the football, the way he's starting to run it, this is perfect for beast mode. Pacific Northwest, it's cold. Buffalo, it's cold. He's ready, and he's in the best shape. And actually, he don't have those uh, rookie or camp legs anymore. He got midseason legs right now. And he's showing that burst like he did up the middle on third and one after our first drive. We gave the ball to Beast Mode three times to start the game. I was impressed, right? The second carry, he got seven yards, made it third and one. Third and one, a 51-yard rip to cut back right off of a simile, a block. He sped inside and was gone. Lights out, over. Beast Mode, in effect. And everybody <laughs> in the car scene was, Beast Mode, Beast Mode. It was all good. So we got to keep letting Beast Mode do his thing. He needs to have at least 20 c touches a game. He has 17 carries for 101 yards. He eclipsed the 100-yard mark, averaging 5.9 yards a carry. That's what you need when it's cold outside. Well, you know, the interesting part is that when you look at the, the fact that we were able to win a game, now, Beast Mode stepped up, Carr stepped up. I mean, but the man of the hour was Mr. Patterson. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away from the other performances. But everybody kept talking about no Crabtree, no Cooper. We didn't need them. I mean, I, I, nothing away from them either. I'm not, I'm not, you know, but I'm just saying, if you look at the results of the game, we didn't need them. Well, Patterson, I mean, he's been a hidden gem, and the Minnesota Vikings didn't know what to do with him. Not only is he leading the league uh, in kickoff returns, but on special teams, on punts, you notice who's got the most down inside the three-yard line? Your boy Patterson. Yeah. And when it came to being a receiver, that bubble screen that he turned into a 67-yard jump to, to ice the game in the fourth quarter, that was huge. He showed some beast mode, too. Oh, yeah. Because after he made contact, it was like two defenders. He busted loose and got another 25 yards out of the run. Well, he plays hard. That's what yeah, I like does. about him. And, you know, how, how, how's the old expression go? Uh, uh, one, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Mm -hmm. And so thank you, Minnesota, for putting that garbage out there for us. Oh, man. <laughs> 
them. <laughs> That's and, all I can say. Hey, man, it was a great thing. But, you know, my player of the game would have to be actually Khalil Mack because I seen the return of the Mack. I yeah. mean, he had uh, Geno Smith running the whole game. They said he had 11 hurries. Of course, the grown man play was just phenomenal. He just took oh, it. Oh, man, he hit him and took the ball on the way down. <laughs> it's like, wow. The only thing he could have did to impress me even more is kept his feet and ran it in Before for a touchdown. touchdown. Yep. I was like, man, he's back. And you know what? I think the – I hate to say it, but uh, removing Ken Norton on the defensive coordinator – the defense hey, is on fire fl- right flying. now. They're flying. They're flying to the ball. Playing aggressive. The leash and, has been taken off. And you and you know Your what? Your boy that, Bruce Irvin. Yeah, but but, but, but but let me tell you what. And, and again, nothing against Ken Norton, although you know he had his shortcomings. But my point is, sometimes you have to give him another look, another voice. And once that happens, that's a new coordinator. Guess what? They want to please because they want to play. Agreed. I mean, and, the and, and they, and they show, oh, yeah, and it showed. They, they got to keep the swagger. That's the main thing. And Derek Carr, hats off to him, like you mentioned, without your starting wide receivers, you still throw for 287 yards and a touchdown with no picks. What a great performance by Derek Carr when we needed him to step up at quarterback and lead us down the field, especially when it was five minutes left in the game because I got a little nervous when it was 17-14. And then he said, okay. Let me bring my boy Cordarrelle Patterson in the game <laughs> and get him involved. Well, I, I honestly, now this is one of the few times that I didn't get nervous. And you know why? Because we were hitting on all cylinders. We had a few plays, of, you know, a few series where we, we, we got out of there and we shouldn't have. But, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. But when you realize that you work with two receivers as much as you do, and Seth Roberts is stepping up, which I'm glad to see that. Definitely. But, but. Once they got the rhythm going, and man, when Patterson started just bulldogging people, you can see him lift the whole team. I mean, that's what, and that, and, and Mac was just phenomenal. Oh man, it was like he showed why he's defensive player of the year. And now that we're getting interior push, let's not forget the Nico Autry. That's two oh, weeks yeah. in a row. Oh, yeah. He had a couple batted balls, well, which right. last year he led the entire league and blocked field goal attempts, so he's always been able to get those hands up in there. He blocked a couple of passes from Geno Smith and got a sack okay. that when they were trying to come back. Well, I'm going to tell you what, 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 what Autry was telling uh, Geno Smith. Take us out of here. Right, and that's exactly <laughs> what he did is take him out of here, and we'll be right back with more of your Raiders show here on our TV. It's the holiday season. Come enjoy our pre-holiday shopping and network extraordinaire, December 9th and 10th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And guess what? It's free, open to the public and free parking. It will be located at the Executive Inn and Suites, 1755 Embarcadero in the city of Oakland, co-hosted by our fantastic, unique vendors. Our guests will enjoy shopping, makeovers, healthcare, networking, gourmet takeout, and more. The contact is Jerry Scaife, 510-326-1458. Come check us out at KJ's Barber and Hair Creations, located 22126 Mission Boulevard in Hayward, California. We specialize in fades, tapers, dreads, weave coloring, and more. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sundays by appointments only. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at KJ's Barbershop. For more information, contact us at 510-690-9610. So come on down to KJ's Barber and Hair Creations. Social Light Jewelry and Accessories is a fashion-forward accessory company. We offer everything from stylish frames to fabulous necklaces. Come check us out at our showroom in Berkeley. The address is 2703 7th Street, Suite 221 in the city of Berkeley. We also have a website, www.socialitejna. Come out and shop for all all of your fabulous needs and welcome back to your Raider show on our TV and you know what it's your Raider show but it's our Raider show too and we we loving this today because we've had our moments and and the one thing that you know whether you like how we do it or whatever we're doing the Raider show so we're here this is, you, you you get who you got but the point is we're always gonna be honest right 
And I think that's, you know, been doing this so many years, but I've always had people out there that see the show and everything. They say, you know, I may not like what you do, but you're honest about it. Right. And as long as we do that, we give our honest opinion about the way we feel and they can agree or disagree, but we're not going to hedge on nothing. No. We're going to be straight up. Right. So let's, I want to talk a little bit, you know, we, we got one segment did, we talked kind of a lot about the offense and, and especially Mr. Patterson and my boy was just golden. Oh, he was golden. He put that ball right down in, within the five yard line so many times. But we got to talk about the defense and Mr. Bowman. Because he was, he, I mean, he's just been such a godsend to the Raiders to come at the time. And again, thank you, 49ers. We appreciate that. But it just fit. It's like he was always there. Well, he's a consummate professional. You have to realize this guy was also defensive player of the year. And after he got injured, after every L broke, ACL, MCL, and... Oh, yeah, he, he's a marvel from that. Right, and MCL. A physical after marvel. After everything broke, he came back the next year and led the league in tackles. So that says enough about his tenacity. But I think more important to the Raiders, they needed someone to direct that defense. They needed someone that could come in and take control of that huddle. They, knew, they needed someone that could see how the offense was aligned and anticipate where to shift and move the people around. And the amazing thing about him is he did that immediately. I think he was traded like on a Wednesday, and he came in and started that that's Sunday. That's right. Right? And he's led the Raiders in tackles each of the games that he's been on the team. But you know what that is? Number one, we know this talent. It's respect. And like you said, the guys know what he was. He's a defense player of the year. He stepped in, in, into the Raider practice field the first day of practice. They respect him because they know he's earned everything. Right. And to come back from his injuries, man, that, that second one, I just thought he was done. And there's some players that make players around them better. Oh, yeah. And he certainly has done that. I see that he's taken two of the younger linebackers, Morrow and James, number 50, right. Morrow, and number 57, uh, uh, Corey James. He's taken them under his wing, and he's shown them and put them in the right position. And those are two up-and-coming linebackers that's going to be linebackers for us for a few years, I do believe. They both show a lot of potential, and I think it's because of him and his presence that's allowing Bruce Irvin to play faster now because he knows somebody that right behind me, Covering that him. next layer is right there, and they have my back. Right. So I'm seeing a lot out of Bruce Irvin, too. So the defense, the front seven, I think is really vastly improved, and part of it is Pajano because Danico Autry was not playing that much under Ken Norton. So he That's got him he in got there, him. and he's, he's getting that push up front, and therefore if you got a push up front, then that's going to free up somebody. And also, Pajano is blitzing more. I saw safety blitz. I saw cornerback blitz. I saw linebackers coming. And I saw the fake to blitz, so he kind of kept Geno Smith off balance. So, you know, it's going to be a little different because the Raiders down the stretch now, we have to face uh, Phillip Rivers. we got to face Carton Wentz. we got to face Alex Smith. You know, and it's just going to be a little bit tougher because those quarterbacks have a little bit more savvy than what uh, the quarterbacks that we just came off of, Paxton Lynch and Geno Smith. So this, as long as we continue to build that momentum, I think our defense will be fine. And also Dak Prescott. Dak and Dak, yeah. I'm sorry. But, I you know, I, I, I got to talk about somebody else who's got their swag back. Mm -hmm. You, my man. Oh, man. Come on with his ascot, <laughs> looking, looking all oh, sharp man. as ever. <laughs> And I'm like, man, that's, that's the one I know. That's, that's the one I know. <laughs> so, but now when you talk about even, and, and, and this is hard to say, but it's true. Even the defensive backs were better. Because they're playing with confidence. Absolutely. And that has to be coming from the new coach. That, and you know, it's the thing that the defensive line and the defensive backs work hand in hand. The coverage has been a little tighter, so the defensive front seven has had a chance to get there a little quicker, right? Because they're getting there now, then that's making the, the cornerbacks decide that, hey, well, I can take a risk. I can jump this route because they're making there. They're getting there sooner than they were doing before. So I think overall the defense has gotten better, and that's the same thing that happened last year. We didn't actually blow the doors down defensively at the beginning of the season last year, but as it got cold outside, when football is the autumn wind, which is a Raider, that's when the Raiders come alive, and that's exactly what's happening right now at this exact moment. So if they continue the momentum that, and allow it to carry over 
in the Kansas City and treat it like a business trip, like they've done throughout the past. We can go in Kansas City and get that win. Well, all I know is that it felt good, and I just know that things happen for a reason. And this could be one of those seasons where you say, you know what, we only be, you know, I'd love to say we're 10 and 6, 9 and 7. It don't matter. But if we get to the dance, we know we can dance now. Oh, absolutely. 9 and 7 can get you in. Again, the formula is easy. Win against Kansas City, win against San Diego. And either be Dallas or Philadelphia. Either one or the other. That's right. That's all we have to do. We already have beaten Kansas City, and in the division, we have a better record than San Diego. So it's right there. Three out of four, we're, we're the division champs. I can go get my money in Reno. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, one of the things that, that, that I look at is the fact that we've played really well at home, mm -hmm. but I think now with, with the emergence of our defense stepping up and really proving that they, could, they can make stops and, and get turnovers and do things, our offenses start. They're both gelling at the same time together, and that's been a problem for a while because one would be playing well and the other wouldn't be playing well. Now we got them both on the same page. I mean, I really think that they can make a push in the playoffs. Now, people say, well, you, you think they're going to beat uh, New England? or On any given day, you can beat anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and all I say is give us a chance to dance. And we can show you we can dance. Oh, we can dance. Because we're not going to play no ballet and all. We're going to play some funky rhythm and blues music right, right. from West Oakland, right. where I came from. Yeah. And, and I'm just telling you you, you, you put the brothers in a position to do the things, they can do it. And, yeah, I, and I'm it, really seeing that now, which I didn't see earlier. Right. I saw spurts, but I didn't see the consistency. Well, I, I agree with you. I felt as if that the Denver game, we were more consistent in complimentary football. Um, I felt as if that... Uh, the special teams, I know you said your boy was pinning them in, but he also took a sack back um, at the well, three-yard line. Yeah, but if you look at the play, he had to take a sack or else it would have been a block and possibly a punt, I mean a, a touchdown. Possible touchdown. Yeah. I give you that. Yeah. But on the other end, Jalen Richard had like three drops on returning hey, punts. So. I, I'm glad you said that. Now, we're going to talk about the Kansas City game, but I, you can ask my wife and anybody in my house this past weekend – he was a topic of discussion, and I told my grandson, I hope that they just let Washington come in. Sid is behind down because you have bad games. And he, he, but he's, this has gone on ever since the Buffalo game. Yeah, he had problems with Bob secur ball security. And we, when we come back, we're going to talk more about the troubles that he's had and some of the other ball security issues that happened in the game. And we're going to look forward to discussing the Kansas City Chiefs and what's upcoming for the Raiders in our next segment here on Our TV your Raider show. Visit Lena's Soul Food, a down-home, southern-style soul food restaurant where every meal is served and prepared with love. Whether you choose to dine in with us, reserve one of our private rooms, or perhaps you desire our catering, Lena Soul Food is located in the wonderful city of Oakland at 6403 Foothill Boulevard. Our business hours are 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and closed on Tuesdays. Give us a call at 510-957-5663. Lena Soul Food, where memories and Southern style meals are made. My name is Jameer Dixon, and I'm a locating Mark Fieldman for PG&E. Most people in the community recognize the blue trucks as PG&E. My truck is something new. It's an A11 truck. When you call A11, I come out to your house, and I mark out our gas lines and our electric lines to make sure that you don't hit them when you're digging. A11 is a free service. I'm passionate about it because every time I go on the street, I think about my own kids. They're the reason that I want to protect our community and our environment. And if me driving that truck means that somebody gets to go home safer, then I'll drive it every day of the week. Together, we're building a better California. LaKay Body Essentials. Pamper yourself with our whipped body butter. Our natural, luxurious body butter main ingredients is shea butter. Our body butter, body oils, and lotions will definitely increase healthier looking and smoother skin. We provide an overall relaxation experience from bath teas and soy candles. You can check us out on Facebook or Instagram at LeKay Body Essentials. That's L-E-K Body Essentials. And welcome back to our last segment on your Raider show on our TV. And we got so much to talk about, but, you know, the segments are the in. segments. <laughs> we <it>. can't, unless, <laughs> unless, but yeah, if, if the Raiders go to Super Bowl, then I think next, next year we need to do an hour show. We'll do an hour Super Bowl preview. How about that? Oh, yeah, that's, that'd be cool. <laughs> but, but let's talk about the fact that 
you know, Matthew was just talking about we got the crab man coming back, mm -hmm. which he, he, I know one thing. He better be glad he only got one game because if he let Patterson get in there, if he'd have got a three or four game suspension, it would have been a wrap for the rest of the season because he probably wouldn't have got his spot back. It would have made it hard for him to come back. Exactly, because he's balling. But I like your, your comment when you say it's not him as much as it is Seth Roberts. Yeah, because I Because of the fact now he had a good game to his credit, but he can't slip up at all. No, he, he has, has no, no room, room for none, for error anymore. none. So, <laughs> so I would actually start eating into some of Seth's carries now. I think Patterson, he's the type of player that you got to get the ball in his hands at least three times a quarter. Yeah. You know, you figure you give him 12 opportunities, he's going to make something happen. He's just that kind of ball player. He's like Cooper. He's a game breaker. Speaking of Cooper, have you heard anything on his diagnosis? Uh, only that he's hopeful. And it's more so about the ankle than it is the concussion. Oh, that, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's more about the, the trainers getting him ready where he can play. And, you know, when we played Kansas City last time, Cooper was a beast. He had two oh, yeah. touchdowns in the first quarter. He had over 210 yards total yards. That was by far his best game as a pro. So we're hoping that he can still get those same matchups. And I'm kind of hoping that they levy a fine against Marcus Peters for throwing that flag up into the, to well, wait, the stands. You took, you, it's funny. You took it right out of my mind because I was thinking about Kansas City. You remember when you saw when they were trying to implode the old uh, Super uh, – not the uh, – in, 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 De in uh, Detroit. The, the Silverdome. The Silverdome. Mm -hmm. Did you see they tried it it didn't work? Mm -hmm. and they finally did it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Peters in Kansas City is doing because they're imploding. And they're doing some of the dumbest things you can possibly do at the mm -hmm. wrong time. I mean, right. you need smart plays. You need yeah. right, the right On effort. a two-point conversion? Seriously? Who takes the ref's flags and throws it into the stands? And then goes back and then comes back after you find out you're not ejected with no socks on. You just come out there with cleats. <laughs> well, you know, he's an Oakland bred boy, and, you know, I actually have had a chance to talk to him. He's a cool cat, but, you know, I'm not wishing him no luck this week because I'm, I'm looking for our offense to be able to attack because the Jets were able to get Kansas City for uh, 38 points. Yeah, but let so. me ask you a question. Why wasn't he suspended? I mean, not suspended, kicked out of the game. I have no idea. I mean, if he would have been wearing silver and black, now you're talking. The consequences, I'm sure, would have been. Oh, a lot no different. question about it. And that's because of Andy Reid. That's right. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. But you know, the good part is, is that I hope that the enthusiasm that we've showed on the show today carries over to our fans because they got to be pumped. And I'm, you know, I, 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 I thought about this driving in when I was thinking about the fact that for two years in a row we miss a home game because of Mexico City. Now, quite honestly, the only person that benefits, you know who the only person that benefits from that is? Kansas City. No. <laughs> no, I'm talking about when we, go, when we go to Mexico City. Oh, it's the Mexico City people. No, the only person that benefits is Mark Davis. Mm -hmm. See, and, and, and that's why, and I've heard very few people talk about it, mm -hmm. but Mark Davis is going to get more money than if the Coliseum was sold out. Mm -hmm. So it's a money thing. And see, that's what I was trying to say. You know, I don't dislike Mark Davis. I've known him since he was a little kid. But his dad and I were very, and he was, I, I had all the respect in the world for Al Davis. And Al Davis was a businessman, but he was a football man first. Yeah, he wouldn't have never took No off. way in the world the would the Raiders be playing. Especially them. against no. the Patriots. Now, he did, he did, he did, did you think? But he did, did it if it was the road game. Right. But he wasn't going to give up no, no home, game. home game. Oh, no, 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 no. So that's the part I don't like. So and we've I, had to play two seasons in a row with nine away games and seven home games. Thank you. Really, to be honest. That's exactly what it is. And we won and won. But you know one thing that I've noticed about the Raiders, and I've looked at them for over four decades, the thing I noticed about the Raiders is nothing never comes easy for us. You know, we well, have to go take what we want. You know, you know why? When it looks like the games, we got the games under control, then we have to win the hard way because we're always playing against the referees. It's just one of them things. But, you know, if you – one thing I used to do in the basketball – uh, game. I hardly ever, I don't ever remember getting a technical because I don't let the, the refs control the game. I let the, my play control what's going on on the floor. But the difference is, is that Al Davis was a rebel and he went and got guys that were through with other teams or with the league. Lyle Alzado, I mean, I just go down the list. Even Hendricks, when he first came here, mm -hmm. he was in trouble and he became all pro here. And he's always been for the underdog. I remember when he got Matusak. Mm -hmm. I mean, just I can go over and over and over. Malcontents. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But but the one guy, and I know you're old enough to remember him. I don't know if you were 
where you are with football at that time. But remember, remember Killer? Remember Henry, oh, oh, Henry, Henry Lawrence? Lawrence? Yeah. Man, I heard. Number 70. Yeah, I heard story. Me and Killer were tight. You know, I was mm-hmm. with all those guys because I was with Nike then and I took care of them and everything. But I remember the stories that he would tell me about Al Davis. And I'm like, Killer, please, really? He said, man, he's, he's the dude, man. If you know something about Killer, you know he has some pipes. He can sing pretty Shh. good. Hey, you see his car? <laughs> no, I haven't seen You've never seen his car? Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, Matthew, you ready for this one? You yawning, but you ready for this one? He had a big, long Cadillac mm-hmm. that had horns on it, on the hood. Oh, he Texas boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we used to tease him. He, and you know what? Didn't bother him a bit. Everybody teased him about it. But well, he, he, loved, what, he loved that that car. Oh, man. He was a magnificent tackle for us as well. Oh, yeah. So one of the things I want to get back to the game because we're running out of time here. We have to be concerned with Alex Smith and what he can do. We're going to talk about right now the keys to victory. Yeah, but right? concern? Concern would be I that, think what you talked about earlier about the defense. Mm-hmm. You talked about two people in particular. You're talking about Bowman mm-hmm. and you're talking about Autry. Mm-hmm. And Khalil Mack is going to do what he's Irving. I mean, just think about all the people you talk about. If we just keep where we are, we're fine. Right. right. Because Alex Smith is not, I mean, he's a good player. He ain't Geno Smith as far as trying to get away from people. Right. But my So point we is, have an advantage. I, I, and not only that, we played them twice a year, every year. So we have pretty much a diagram of them, but the same holds true for us. My point is that he, what he did uh, against the Jets that was impressive is he had a 70-yard run. And Alex Smith is pretty pretty nimble oh, yeah. for, for a quarterback. And uh, he's throwing the ball down the field, and he has weapons that can get deep. So I think from a defense standpoint, we cannot let Tyreek Hill get behind right. us. That would be Our one secondary has to step it up like they have in the last couple of games. Point well taken. We need the secondary to step up. The next key is that we've got to be able to run the football so that we can have them load up the box, and then we need to throw the ball down the field because their secondary is suspect. They gave up 38 points to the Jets. Amari killed them for two touchdowns and 210 yards last time. So we've got to be able to throw the ball down the field, and they have to be set up by the run. And third, we can't afford to make any turnovers because Thank Kansas you. City thrives off turnover football. So we've got to protect the football, and that's back to your boy, you know, if he don't practice the jugs machine catching punts this week, <laughs> then I definitely wouldn't have him back there. Put Washington in there. afford to do that. I, I mean, at least he's safe with it. He, he don't fumble the ball. He, you know, but, you know, like Matthew was saying, I just think he's just, he just don't have that, that confidence to go. I mean, he doesn't even look right back there. And, I mean, it's just what it is. Now, I mean, he, he may get on. That's what I was just about to say. Nice. But this, right. you, as a coach, you got to realize, hey, if this Catch is what it is, this first. is what it is. So take us on out of here because we're about ready to go. Okay, well, I'm going to take you out, and hopefully the Raiders going to turn up this week when we visit Kansas City for the first of a four-week season to win the AFC Western Division. And we'll be right back here next week to share the outcome of that game with you on your Raiders show here on our TV.